In this lesson, I'll show you how to calculate the escape velocity on the surface of the Earth. Now before we begin, the escape velocity is the speed which we would have to shoot something vertically up to completely remove it from Earth's gravitational pull. To calculate something like this, we need to consider the conservation of energy formula. And that formula incorporates the kinetic energy and the potential energy before and after. The way it's represented is we say kinetic energy plus the potential energy is conserved, so you'll have the same on the right side. This part of the equation will be the initial, and the right side of the equation will be the final. And I'll represent that with these subscripts. Shown here on the left, you'll see the formula for kinetic energy being half mass times velocity to the power of 2, and that can be applied over here as well, half mass times velocity to the power of 2, and again I'll add subscripts to denote the final versus the initial, so that's the initial velocity, that's the final velocity, and when we learned potential energy in previous videos, we said that potential energy is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the height. And in those examples, we were discussing objects that had potential energy from a distance close enough to the Earth's surface that the acceleration g was a constant at 9.8 meters per second squared. But as the height increases more and more, as you bring an object further and further away from the Earth's surface, the acceleration due to gravity weakens. So instead of using this formula, we use the formula shown right here instead, and this formula takes into account the change in potential energy that arises as a result of the acceleration due to gravity getting weaker in large-scale cases such as what we have here. So m times g times h cannot apply here. You'll also notice that the formula is negative, and that's not a mistake. Potential energy is a form of work. So if we were to lift an object from the ground to some height h, for example, the force applied to make that object rise to h is positive since it's directed upwards. But because gravity pulls everything down, the gravitational potential energy is written negative because its force is acting in the opposite direction. So I'll write down plus this value, and since it's negative, we don't need to write down plus and minus next to each other. I'll just write down minus g times the mass of the object that's escaping, multiplied to the mass of the Earth, over the radius of the Earth. On the right side, again, we'll have the same expression. So I have minus g times m times the mass of the Earth divided by a distance that is infinitely far away from the Earth where the gravitational pull is almost nothing. So by setting r equal to a very, very large number, technically this whole term goes to zero. It's like taking the limit as r approaches infinity. So that's zero, and at that point, once that object has reached a point that's so far away that there's barely any gravitational pull, the velocity to return will also be zero. So all of this term goes to zero, and we're left with an equation of what's only on the left side. So let's write this down. Notice that we have an m and an m here. That can be factored out, and if you divide both sides by m, it just goes away afterwards. So we don't even need to write down this m value. So just to reiterate, factoring out an m from both of these terms, and then dividing both sides by m, where the right side is 0, that m value disappears anyway. So it's not important. We have half the initial velocity, which is technically what we're looking for here, the speed required to escape Earth's gravitational pull. And I'll bring this term over to the other side where I have capital G, the mass of the Earth, over the radius of the Earth. And that's a constant. The mass of the Earth is something that would be given to you in the question. And now we'll multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of this fraction. Multiply this side by 2 and we will square root both sides. So we have the initial velocity is equal to the square root of that value, 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 11, newtons meters squared per kilogram squared, 
And we'll multiply that by the mass of the Earth, which is 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. Multiply to 2, divided by the radius being 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. So this unit and one of those kilograms will cancel out. This meters and one of those meters will cancel out. Let's use our calculator. The square root of 6.7 times 10 to the power of negative 11 times 2 times 6.0 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by the radius being 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6. We get a velocity of 11,208. I'll write this down in scientific notation, 1.1 times 10 to the power of 4 meters per second. And the reason why it's meters per second is because remember that newtons is an SI unit that represents kilograms times meters per second squared. So this kilogram and that final kilogram unit would have canceled out. This meter unit and that meter unit, the one that was remaining, would have ended up becoming meters squared. Then square rooting, meters squared and seconds squared, would have ended up giving you meters per second. And that's the reason why it reduces down to that unit. And so there you have it. This is the velocity that a rocket or an object needs to be moving directly up perpendicular to the Earth in order for it to eventually escape the gravitational pull of Earth.